I love music, and I like it loud. I had a band, and I was a music journalist who hung out with other bands, major bands, in clubs. Very loud clubs. My life was insanely rock and roll and loud until it suddenly wasn't. In 2008, my life took a dramatic turn within a series of months. I found myself in a pe short period of time horrifyingly moving back into my parents' home. I was randomly robbed. I was almost killed in a freak car accident. And I was trying to support my mother as she battled breast cancer. It was a really difficult time of upheaval and stress. During that time, I made two decisions that radically changed my life for the better. One, I quit drinking. And two, I learned how to embrace silence. Okay, now in that moment of silence right there, you might have thought I forgot a line, but I didn't. And you were also probably thinking, okay, I could see how quitting drinking would be beneficial, but what's the deal with learning how to embrace silence? Well, it turns out the noise in my life was almost as problematic as my drinking was. You see, I'm not talking about the literal definition of silence, which is the absence of sound. I'm talking about a more metaphorical definition. The ability to create stillness so that you are present and can hear the world around you. What has happened to being present? Think about a concert, for instance. If you're at a show and you're face planting into your phone the whole time, you are actually disconnected from the world around you. And I'm not proud to admit it, but I've done it myself. You know, when I was working at Twitter, I went to see Jack White play a small club show. And before the show began, we were all admonished to not take photos or videos or tweet, or else risk getting kicked out of the venue. As the show began, I saw fans actually get kicked out for taking video and photos, and I became furious. I was like, who does this guy think he is? And then I thought about it from his perspective. You know, I've played shows, and it must seem really weird to transition from being an artist who authentically connects with his audience to one who now plays in front of a sea of devices. And what is so bizarre and uncomfortable about simply singing along in a bar with Jack White that you would rather get kicked out of the venue than simply put your phone down? Look, modern advancements in communication and technology have certainly helped us, but we've gotten to a point where a lot of us feel more uncomfortable standing in a line or sitting in a table without our phone than without our friends and family. And some of us, dare I say, cannot even go to the bathroom without our phones. <laughs> In addition to how not embracing silence can affect the world around us, it also affects how we relate to others one-on-one. -on -one. As I sat with a lot of pain and upheaval in my life in 2008, I had to learn to connect to what was directly in front of me. I began to go on hikes, I began to meditate, and I began to spend more time with my family. And one of the things I noticed was that my dad and I often got into raging fights because, as he put it, I refused to listen. And 2008 was an election year in the United States, so you can guess what we might have been arguing about. <laughs> um, so during one particularly brutal fight with my dad, I took a step back and I was present to see my behavior. And I realized I needed to make amends and I said, you know what, Dad, I'm sorry for not being the best daughter I can be. I'm going to give you the gift of silence. You might want to silence that phone right there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give you the gift of silence. And what that meant was that I was not going to prepare counter arguments while he talked. I was not going to have to agree with everything he said. Lord knows I usually didn't. But I would honor his point of view. What happened after that was nothing short of a miracle. My dad and I got along in a way I never thought possible. We began laughing more. He started inviting me on his weekly coffee and donut trips on the weekend. <laughs> and I was so amazed that all this happened simply because I began to embrace silence. In addition to how silence can help us connect with those in front of us, it can also help us connect with ourselves. Have you ever been the only person in an elevator with one other stranger? 
I don't enjoy this. What I tend to do is I get in the elevator and I go over here, I ignore your existence, and I get my phone out. Why do I do this? I think it's because I would rather look at my phone and check out than be uncomfortable ever. But we don't grow when we're comfortable. If you think about the seminal moments of your life, either personally or professionally, they've often evolved out of discomfort. When we are forced to confront the world in front of us exactly as it is, we change. So, how did I do it? How did I learn to <clears throat> enjoy the silence? Well, the first thing I did was I went analog. I decided to put pen to paper. I have been journaling since I was seven years old. But when my life got in crazy, loud, and noisy fashion, I stopped journaling. When I decided to embrace silence again, I picked up my pen. Author Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way, A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity, argues that the most important tool in the arsenal of a recovering creative is journaling. But not just any journaling. It's writing three pages, long form, every morning of whatever is going through your subconscious. She calls this practice the morning pages. My morning pages have been the place where I've discovered new dreams, determined my career path, wrote new songs, wrestled with God, and learned more about myself. They are an extremely powerful tool, and they are free to essentially ancient objects, a writing utensil, and a paper readily at your disposal. Once I connected pen and paper, then it was time to go out into my world and let it be its own soundtrack. You know, we've been gifted with one of the most beautiful soundtracks of all time, nature, and we often can't hear it because we have earbuds in or the stereo on. So for me, learning how to embrace silence was to go on a hike or to walk my city and let the city sing to me the buzz of the cars, or to go to the ocean and let the ocean breeze whisper secrets of siren songs and far off ships. As I connected to nature around me, I felt more connected to myself. Now, for those of you who think this is going off in a little bit of a hippie direction now and want me to get a bit more pragmatic, I got a solution for you too, guys. Try a technology curfew. Do you really need to check every single social media platform 50 times a day? No. Do you risk falling down a black hole of viral videos every time you do? Yes. Look, we all know that social media isn't bad, but we need to create some structure in our life. For me, what this looks like is during my work week, I create a technology curfew. I'll write a list of things I need to get done in order to feel good about myself, or I'll set a time of like eight o'clock, after which I can loiter the internet with abandon. Does that sound a bit ridiculous? Yes, but so are those two hours of cat videos you watched yesterday on BuzzFeed. Testify. <laughs> now, I want to warn you, if you decide to take this journey, you need to be prepared for resistance. <laughs> be gentle with yourself, because you will encounter internal resistance. Lord knows I did just writing this talk. You will find your brain starting to think, Oh, why am I doing this? Isn't this even that important? I mean, what's the big deal? I don't really care. It's okay. Just know that you are moving toward powerful transformation. You are moving toward creating space in your life for more creativity, improved relationships, and a deeper knowledge of yourself. Recognize that fear is often disguised as resistance to change, and you are moving towards powerful change if you want it. On December 12th, 2008, three weeks after I gave my dad the gift of silence, he celebrated his 59th birthday. The day before was my parents' 32nd wedding anniversary. We're not much of a present family, but I decided that I would get my folks a happy anniversary slash happy birthday dad gift. I'll never forget 
the image of my parents standing in the kitchen laughing as they opened the Black Angus gift certificate. That was their deal. <laughs> and they were so happy. And I stood back and I thought, all of this happened simply because I learned to embrace silence. The next day, on December 13th, 2008, I received a call from my brother as I was driving home from a friend's house. And he said, I, I think dad just died of a heart attack. And he had. I didn't get to say goodbye to him. When I returned home from the hospital that night, I walked into my bedroom and there was a Christmas gift from my dad two weeks early, waiting for me. It was a GPS system I had wanted for my car. It turns out my dad had been listening to me. I later said at his funeral that I think he must have also known I was gonna feel lost, so he left me something so I could find my way. As I sat that night, quite literally in the heaviest silence I've ever felt, I was overwhelmed with grief, but also overwhelmed with joy at the miraculous transformation that had happened in our relationship as evidenced by this gift. Embracing silence changed my life. It changed my relationship with my family and with the world around me. And while I still honestly struggle to be present in this very multi-sensory world, I know that true transformation and miracles lie on the other side of silence. I hope you find them. And thank you for giving me your silence today. <laughs>